presented in partnership with the University of Phoenix. An educated world is a better world. All right, this time, if the cream's on my side of the Oreo, you're gonna have to marry Emily Stevens. Ugh. You may have heard of an Oreo twist-off, a childhood game in which players grab opposing sides of an Oreo cookie and pull apart. Whoever ends with the cream filling wins. On the playground, it's considered the equivalent of a coin flip, but are the odds really 50-50? Researchers at Princeton University have been investigating this very question. What has happened here is I was applying a high local stress on either side of this thing, so presumably I generated some breakage process crack propagation. It's got nothing to do really with fracture in the normal sort of parlance of the trade. It's a, it's a debonding process, an interfacial <laughs> debonding process. Now there's one smart cookie, but does he have our answer? To find out, let's first take a closer look at just how one might conduct research on cookies. To the laboratory. It's a balance. I think that's how I think of an instrument. And you can use it to cause one part of the balance to move at a constant speed and propagate failures uh, in, a, in a controlled way. And then the cream has just failed, you know, where it's failed. But it's an interesting fracture because this is not a homogeneous material. The thickness of the cream is altering effectively the geometric moment of inertia of your Oreo cookie. And the wafer, the exterior surface, it's a very uneven surface. These are a series of incipient cracks, one might say. Well, parts of it is a series of incipient cracks. And so you apply a stress and then it goes to bluing. <laughs> now the question of if you apply the torque, that applying a rotation like that would strip the goop in the middle so easily, I don't, to be, to be honest, see why. But if you glue your cookie to a piece of stuff, that will provide a torque. And if you make a rig to do that, it will give you a, a, a measure of the, of the torque. With the data now in hand, it's time for the analysis. I hope your algebra's up to snuff. Grab some chalk and let's get to it. So when we're developing a strategy, you know, we call this force A and force B. And say, you know, force A's strategy is going to be so we say some rotation this of, uh, against this 4 degree. Yeah, and there's going to be you know, velocity per pound to build up. So uh, have something like this. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> it's applied to the top. If you look at the physics of your Oreo cookie, it's, it's infinite. <laughs> so there's lots of, you should go around and look at physics, it's all around us. You know? Well, that's all very nice, but have they figured out how to win the game? As it turns out, they have. And the answer has everything to do with the way in which the cookies are made. They clearly put down a row of cookies. This is the side on which the goop was dropped initially. We pushed on it, and it got properly impregnated on this piece, and the shear flow didn't do as good a job on the other one. This causes a better adhesion to the, the initial wafer. So one side will have a stronger bond between wafer and cream. So there's your answer. It turns out that because of the way Oreos are made, the winning sides all face the same direction in the pack. Just figure out which direction it is for your pack, and you'll never lose. For scientists, this may not be the most rewarding solution, but I suppose that's just the way the cookie crumbles. 